Remember when Adventure Time did a Minecraft crossover right before he dropped his finale? This special came as a standalone episode that featured a land of blue that is a Minecraft world. It's definitely one of my favorite cartoon and game crossovers, so I'm going to spend the rest of this video talking about the episode, how it came about, and how well it was received by each fanbase. This crossover aired on the 20th of July 2018, right as Adventure Time was about to conclude. It dropped after the penultimate canon episode Gambodia, but just before the last episode of the series, Come Along With Me. This positioning actually made some people initially mad because the finale was already taken a long time to drop, which was the source of the frustration. So when Cartoon Network decides to release an Adventure Time episode that had nothing to do with the series, but instead it was a crossover with a children's video game, fuel was added to this flame and you can understand why some people were annoyed. But enough talking about angry fans, let's actually get into the episode itself and see if it was a good idea or dumpster truck garbage. Before we get on to it, I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed to the channel if you do go on to enjoy this video so that we can hit my goal of 2000 subscribers by the end of the year. Now back to the video. First off, we can give the episode points for the way it begins because the team created a killer new intro theme to go with this crossover. The intro is a pixelated version of the normal Adventure Time theme song and it is packed full of references and callbacks to characters we haven't seen in a while. These are blank and you'll miss the moments because of how fast it comes and goes, but these are the little things that make you know that a lot of effort was put into making this piece as wholesome as possible. This pixel intro sets its own for the type of episode we're about to get, as you can tell that something special is coming. Diamond and Lemon start off in the worst possible way for a Minecraft player, and I'm guessing this is because it's Finn's first time playing in survival mode or he has never listened to Dawn Mine at night, because for some reason, he is outside at night trying to fetch a bucket of water while monsters are all around. If you haven't played Minecraft before, you should know that when you spawn into a new world, you are advised to spend the first few days at least preparing and gathering resources to make your character better, and then use those first few nights for sleeping, because of how unprepared you are for the monsters. Finn learns this lesson the hard way as he loses his tools to the horde of monsters he has to fight to survive. Fortunately, he's able to kill them and survive throughout the night and into the morning. This is when he comes across Lemon Grab trying to plant a lemon tree. He doesn't pay much attention to this and heads to the treehouse where we encounter Jake mining for diamonds. Finn helps out and soon enough, they get a whole stack of diamonds which is very impressive but Jake commits the cardinal crime of throwing his diamonds into lava for fun. And this obviously makes Finn not happy so he decides to do the sensible thing and goes on an adventure to teach Jake the cool things he could do with a diamond. But before we leave the mine, we come across Lumpy Space Princess and her gravel gang consisting of the Ice King and they're here plotting on how they can grief Finn and Jake. And if you didn't know, griefing is basically Minecraft talk for sabotaging someone's building and it's usually done by players who troll their friends but sometimes there is some real malice to it which is actually befitting of Lumpy Space Princess and the Ice King and I know that if they were gamers, they would most definitely be doing this. The next time we see Finn, he's with Marceline and Princess Bubblegun who are working on constructing a windmill with help from some skeleton slaves. Finn adds them to help him create something with the diamonds to impress Jake so Princess Bubblegum uses a legit crafting table to make a firework for Finn. And this is one of my standout moments from the episodes and I'll go over why very soon. Finn's travels lead him to Tree Trunk's place where she bakes some pie for him and gives him a pumpkin seed to keep on his way back to the treehouse. It's getting late so Finn needs to head back and for some unknown reason he uses the carrot and stick method with Tree Trunks' husband, Mr. Pig. And I won't even lie, I laughed at how random this whole thing was when it came up. From Finn bringing it up to everybody just deciding to go on ahead with it with little resistance. And for my non-Minecraft viewers, this is actually one of the prescribed methods of travel in Minecraft. You can craft a saddle alongside a stick with a carrot on it then find a pig to hop on and reach high speeds of 4.5 blocks per second. But this segment leads us to my favorite interaction of the episode, which is Finn's interaction with the Enderman, which is my favorite mob in the game. It's basically like a ninja that only attacks you when you look in its eyes. Oh, and it can teleport and is damaged by water. The Enderman is minding its own business when Mr. Pig just menacingly looks into his eyes and abandons Finn to meet a grisly fate. But Finn, after taking some lessons in Minecraft 101, stares at his feet and this brings the Enderman to him and they have a standoff. Luckily for Finn, Lovey's Space Princess appears and redirects the attention of the Enderman to the Ice King. And at this point, I feel like Lovey's Space Princess is obligated to do one good thing per season or everybody would just completely hate her character. And speaking of completely hating Lovey's Space Princess, I made a video on that a while ago so feel free to check it out, I'll have it in the top corner. 
The following day, Lemon Grab finally grows his tree because Princess Bubblegum lends her help, but when he grows it, he is reminded that there are in fact no lemons in Minecraft and he is instead greeted with apples when he reaches out to get some fruit. This makes him break down in disbelief, and the episode ends with Finn and Jake back in the dungeon beneath the treehouse because Finn wants to light up the firework for Jake to see. The firework gets launched into the roof of the cave, and Finn makes a remark about beauty, hard work, action, and blah blah blah. But this brings us to the end of the 12 minute crossover. And if you do want to watch this again, you can find clips on YouTube. But you may be wondering why I did Adventure Time, out of all other shows on Cartoon Network, get to do this crossover with Minecraft. It's an awesome show, don't get me wrong, but wouldn't there have been numerous shows to pick from at the time before it was chosen? And well, the answer to this is in an interview Adventure Time showrunner Adam Muso did just before the crossover premiered, and he said that Peddleton Ward, the creator of Adventure Time, was already a huge fan of Minecraft and played it along with other members of the crew, so they were all already huge fans of the game. But by that time, Adventure Time had already collabed with Minecraft for an Adventure Time expansion pack in the game. So the relationship between Minecraft's parent company Mojang and Cartoon Network was already there. This led to talks about them creating a Minecraft-inspired episode, and when the opportunity came up, you better believe they grabbed it with all their hands. With Adam Moodle even commenting that one of the main reasons they made it was so that the crew could have one more time to work together, because Adventure Time was wrapping up soon. So they got to work deciding the art style they would choose to animate the episode, because they had been given direction from Mojang to not make the episode look like a game, which is understandable because he wouldn't want people to mistake one for the other, and seeing how the episode turned out, it's safe to say that they made the right choice by picking the art designs that artist Joe Sparrow cooked up. In my words, I would describe it as being Adventure Time style, but the soul of Minecraft. It's not just a blocky misrepresentation of the game, but rather, the crew used their skills to combine the spirits of both Minecraft and Adventure Time and bring it to life. The episode is never really treated like a collaboration where they just fill up the runtime with Minecraft Easter eggs, but it's an actual episode with a solid story and it feels like the normal life in Adventure Time just to replace with Minecraft mechanics. For instance, the way Princess Bubblegum uses the diamond that Finn gives her with some other side to create a firework on a literal crafting table. It just so casually happens like that was something that they always do in their world and not just a quirky moment that came up because of the episode. But what I'm basically saying is that the crossover felt natural and not forced in any way at all. Another easter egg that caught my attention was Finn riding Mr. Pig from Tree Trunk's house to the forest with just a stick and carrot. Because the way that Finn just awkwardly brought it up that he wanted to ride Mr. Pig will never not be funny. It's a nice nod to the game, the way it seamlessly incorporated it into the episode. Also, I loved Finn's confrontation with the Enderman. Like I said before, the Enderman has always been my favorite mob in the game since I was a kid, and so seeing it depicted in the show in this life is so pleasing to me. And the fact that he straightened up the Ice King in the end gives him more points in my eyes. Not only are these references fun, but I feel like even if you aren't a Minecraft super fan, you could easily enjoy this crossover just like any other Adventure Time episode. You wouldn't need an in-depth knowledge of both media to understand and enjoy what was happening. It's an episode with a timeless appeal that you could just tune in to watch on a regular basis and still vibe heavily with it. These reasons are why I think this crossover was a general success. I didn't really see any negative comments thrown at it, so to me, people generally enjoyed it. And if you enjoyed this video as well, why don't you show it to me by commenting something about it in my comments. And while you're there, feel free to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more awesome cartoon content and so that we can hit 2000 subscribers before the end of the year. Click here to watch this video on regular shows Art of Escalation and click over here to watch another video on why Netflix loves canceling good cartoons. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys next time, tune out.